I am so excited to start in on our conversation about learning and memory. One of the things that I think is the most powerful and most beneficial to learn about is how to remember better. Not only are we creating new spaces and new strategies where we can store away information for memory, but we're also expanding that neural network in our brain. We're expanding our mind's ability to think differently and creatively. So what we're going to talk about today is a new memory challenge, and that is of memorizing all 50 states and their capitals. Now, we're not gonna do this all at once. We are going to tackle them in smaller groups. So we're starting with Alabama and ending for now with Georgia. And what we're expanding this strategy into is an opportunity to utilize a new memory retention strategy, a new skill, and to really put it to the test. So we're going to incorporate a memory palace another name for the journey method, where we utilize the geographical components or areas of our brain so that we can put information in these physical locations so that we can easily go back and retrieve it when we want it. Now, I know for many, this strategy feels awkward and it doesn't feel comfortable. And here's an opportunity to really force yourself to apply the strategy because the volume of information that we're going to try to include will be really tough to memorize simply through some of our older memory retention strategies that work when we have smaller lists or more routine um, types of items that we're trying to remember. So not only are we going to memorize those states and capitals, but we're also going to incorporate the state bird and the state flower for all 50 states. If you remember some things, great. If you don't remember everything, that's fine. Either way, you're engaged in this learning process and you are incorporating new neural connections in your brain. You are making your neural net that much more robust. You're improving your memory simply by trying. Another common question that I get around these types of exercises is an important one to answer right off the bat, and that's of why I don't need all this information. And no, you do not. We have Google and we have Siri and we have all of the information we could possibly want at our fingertips. The reason that we learn to remember these relatively arbitrary facts is that so we can remember those facts that are not arbitrary. This type of exercise, as in all learning, makes our memory more efficient, makes our minds more robust. We've taken a list of the first 10 states and their capitals, and then we have expanded on that list, and we are now also including the list of the state bird and the state flower. As you're going to take the home that you live in right now, and that is going to be your memory palace. Whether it's a palace or not, What you're gonna to want to be doing is identifying 10 different locations in your home on this drawing that you can use to house these pieces of information. And so once you have that, that blueprint created, you now have the groundwork for your memory palace. And this is when it starts to get really fun. So I want you to think about taking a natural journey through your home and identify locations on that blueprint 
that you've created that would follow a natural progression. Or if you walk in straight into your kitchen and that's a great place to start, or if you've chosen your garage and that's the great place to start, you know, just indicate where where the first location will be and then that progression along your pathway through your memory palace, how that will go. This palace, we're gonna call this our ag palace. It's A through G, states A through G. So when someone asks you, what is the state flower of Colorado? You're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna go to the A to G house and I'm going to go to the location where I have housed Colorado and that's where that information is going to be. If someone says, well, in Florida, what is the state bird? You're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna go to the A to G house, the ag house, I'm gonna go find Florida and then I'm gonna retrieve the information from there. in your first location on the door. If there's a door, if there's an entryway, if there's a prominent wall, I do want you to put the state of Alabama and I want you to write the name. So if you can visualize in your mind's eye that shape of the state of Alabama in a poster or painted on the wall along with the name written below it. So we have the visual of both the state and the name there prominently featured in this location. And so now you've been tasked with the um, job of figuring out how are you going to put Montgomery? How are you gonna put Yellowhammer, uh, which is the bird, and how are you gonna put the Camilla, which is the flower, inside of this space that is now Al Alabama's room? So what I have done is I use visuals, I use creative visuals, that works best for me, and for me, Montgomery was associated with Alabama because the Alabama hills are at the foothills of the High Sierra, and that's what I thought of. I thought of these mountains that were the uh, Alabama hills made out of gum, mountains of gum, Montgomery. So Alabama and Montgomery created an association for me. So I open up this door that has the Alabama state shape and the word on it, and I see a mountain of gum, and a woman named Camilla wearing a yellow dress is holding a yellow hammer, and she is smashing this mountain of gum. So I have a very clear visual of this angry Camilla holding her petite yellow hammer, smashing a pile of gum, and it's very simple for me, based on that visual, to recall those words. Now for you, it might be something completely different and finding the visual that works best for you is the key to your best memory. So let's move on to a second example. So how are you going to associate Juno, um, the willow ptarmigan, and the forget-me-not flower? How are you gonna do that in, that in this space? It's completely up to you to create a visual that works well for you in that space. So again, you're moving on to the next location and Arizona is going to be on the door and you are going to write the word Arizona and you're gonna see the shape, the kind of bland shape of that state as well, no offense Arizona, and you're gonna move in and how are you gonna incorporate Phoenix? How are you gonna incorporate the cactus wren? How are you gonna incorporate the Seguro cactus blossom? start creating some visuals. Um, even ones that might be simple for you, I'm gonna encourage you to continue to work towards visuals because you are practicing making associations with simple things that might be easier for you to recall and that's gonna improve, enhance your ability to create associations all the time for things that are going to be harder. So for example, California, my pool thankfully fell in line with the state of California and so I visualized a, one of those pool floats that you might lounge upon but it's in the shape of California and it's topographically correct and so I have the the pool float and I also have a, a sack of Mentos you know the Mento Mint a sack of Mentos on the pool float and that helped me think of Sacramento and then I also have in one of the valleys that is on this pool float there's a quail 
So it's a California Valley quail, and the quail is pecking at a piece of poppy seed bread. And so that, again, was a really effective way for me to incorporate things that might I might already remember, but I am beefing up my creativity. I am beefing up the, the ease and um, uh, quickness with which I make associations, and it makes it that much um more fun and uh, I'm so much quicker at recalling these things w when I get in the practice of doing it all the time. So um, Connecticut. So we are outside in my backyard with Connecticut and, and um, Hartford. There is heart surgery going on on a beautiful robin. The robin is getting heart surgery and they're connecting, they're cutting, connecting, cutting, connecting. The ability for you to create your own associations, memorable um, visuals is key. So a few reminders. I encourage you to take on as much of it as you're willing to because I am so excited for you to find out how much information your brain can store when we take on these new and different strategies. It really is so um, so fun and so um, inspiring to see what we're able to do when we simply learn how to do it efficiently. Uh, another reminder is that if your home does not necessarily lend itself to 10 different rooms or specific locations, keep in mind it could be an entryway. It could be a bookshelf. It could be your refrigerator. So different locations don't need to be rooms. You can get really creative with on your refrigerator door having the shape of, let's say, Delaware and um, opening it up and seeing the maybe the sole Dover inside. And for whatever reason, there's a blue heron poking around inside. Maybe that blue heron has a peach blossom sticking out of its mouth. So there's so many different ways that you don't necessarily need to take a room. Take what you have, take what you know, take these locations that are feel familiar with you, create associations with these different um, items, and we are going to um, fill up this ag home with all of these different states, capitals, birds, and flowers. Develop these associations, practice them, rehearse them. Repetition and association are two of our memory powerhouses. And then when it's time, we're going to move on to our next set of states. So if there's any questions, please never hesitate to reach out. I love hearing from you. Lisa at chunkyseahorse.com. You can email me, lisa at chunkyseahorse.com. Please feel free to email me with questions if something didn't make sense to you. And I can't wait to hear what creative connections you've been able to come up with. And I hope you do have fun with this project. <music>